Hi guys, it's Joey, and this is Salem. I'm so uber jealous of everybody's fur babies that this this is as close as I can get. Salem is my uh, witch cat that my friend Lee, Linda, so my friend Linda gave me Samhain before last. She and I do um, Samhain sort of presents for each other. Isn't he cute? He's as close to a real cat as I can get. So Salem's going to sit here and supervise. <laughs> I want a cat, don't you tell? Okay, so I'm going to do this video about forgiveness and it's because of something that I've personally been through um, although I'm sure it is poignant within the community and uh, with what a lot of other people are going through but this one's from, from my life so on my death cycle video I talked about my friend who I'd known a long long time and um, her and I had come to a verbal arguments about spirituality and versus not believing in anything and then that escalated into a personal insult where um, she used my most painful memories in in a way to hurt me and I considered that to be the end of our friendship and it hurt me really deeply, it really did um, come back Salem, I need hugs so um, she sent me a box actually and there are a number of things in it and when I first went down the post office to collect it I had a sense of dread because I thought she'd sent me back like everything that I'd ever sent her and it wasn't the case at all and uh, it was an I'm sorry letter and some other bits and pieces and I think I'll show you the other bits and pieces in a separate video and I won't divulge the, the letter itself and, because it's highly personal but it was a heartfelt apology and that put me into an interesting situation then because then it was up to me what to do and she apologized for what she had done on each level you know um, she sent some things which were meant to be um, her uh, sort of, it, she called it a penance of spirituality, you know, she gave me a couple of things that would appeal to my spiritual belief in offering to say sorry for that aspect and then the letter addressed everything else and she said, um, I hope you keep them as a goodbye gift if you can't forgive me and the letter itself was very heartfelt I, very heartfelt I felt and she just said she was in the wrong and she'd been feeling sick and she felt that she'd betrayed her sister because that's what she did. Now me and this p person and my friend have been through hell and high water together. We've both had difficult lives and we've been there for each other. I mean at one point when I was made homeless she took me in so I will never, you know, I can, I will never forget that and so I talked to the gnome and I talked to my blood sister and came to the decision that because of who she is and the long-standing relationship that we have had this is the first time anything like this has, has really happened and I understand that she was in a really difficult place with regards to a lot of other things uh, no, not that that's an excuse but that, that that was you know there was that going on behind the scenes and I don't want her to be in pain so I came to the decision that because of who she was because of how heartfelt the letter was and the effort she she went you know to 
extra effort to show how sorry she was and she started actually making adjustments and changes in her life that have been poisoning her and making her angry all the time and she's gone and started making adjustments and gave me examples of how she made adjustments in her apology letter. So it threw me through threw me yesterday and I sat and went through all the emotions that if this boiled into, you know, because up until that point and even when I got the box and I didn't know what was in it, I was under the impression that everything was done and over and there was a, a, a lot of sadness connected to that and I've been going through that sadness um, and it did lift my heart a bit to read, read it um, for sure and I decided that I will forgive her for this and I've emailed her today I don't think she's read it yet. Um, I decided to email rather than write because I thought it, it needed a, a quicker response than if I'd have written back. You know, I didn't want her to think I was ignoring it. Um, so what I thought was an absolute death cycle wasn't. And I'm happy about that. I am happy. Um, it, it's, it's very, I know I don't seem very happy. It's very, very emotional and very overwhelming. And I'm just trying to put into words the situation. I think that a lot of how I feel about giving forgiveness to this person is based upon the uh, long standing relationship in which we had. We have known each other and been pretty close since I think 14 or 15. I think. I think it was around then. Maybe we knew each other a bit before then and started properly getting to know each other about then. And we have lots of good memories and good and bad times, but nothing like what had just happened. You know, just usual friendship things that, you know, sometimes you have arguments and it just happens. Um, it, it, you know, the usual friendship things that, but we have supported each, each other through everything, you know, every sort of horrible life situation you can think of, we have supported each other through. And because of who she is, I, I decided that y yes, I can. And another thing that moved me to that point is, um, it was words and not like some horrible thing, you know, like deed. Like, for example, um, if your very best friend had slept with your husband, that would be completely different than words being, you know, slung about in anger, because then that would have been a physical act, which would have been a complete disrespect. And this was words, and they were hurtful, and they hurt me, and it, it really did hurt me, but it was words and not some terrible act. Um, and she's my sister, um, you know, my soul sister, not my blood sister, but, um, and I love her very much and I've loved her a long, long time. And I, I said in my email to her, you know, it's, it's going to be a process, obviously. It, it, it can't just be poof and it's fine. Um, but we're going to have to build again, but I'm willing to do that. And she made the, you know, she just said that she was wrong and, and asked if I would forgive her and I can. So I think that's going to be... It's going to be hard, I think, but I think it is doable. So, I thought I would share that I'm going through this with the community and talk a little bit on the end here about forgiveness whilst scratching my ear. 
Okay, I come back to Salem. So I need a real cat. <laughs> a real cat would make me feel so much better. <laughs> um so I'm gonna talk about sort of forgiveness and when it is appropriate maybe and um when it is too quickly given and to the wrong people or should it be given at all and I think quite often when we get into uh, situations we forget that you know we're all human we all say things we shouldn't really say I mean I have a really um, long fuse I, I've properly properly lost my temper two or three times in my life that I can recall like proper full-on lost my temper and each time it was completely and utterly merited and I'm quite scary when I'm angry and it scares people around me when I'm angry because to get to that point is it takes a lot um, I get irritated and frustrated but not full-on angry and you know everybody does get to that point we do lose our temper, we are human. I mean there are going to be people out there who play on that fact to try and get away with permanently acting in, you know, in a bad way towards other people and getting away with actions which they keep doing. You know I think that's the key thing. I mean is it a cycle, is it a pattern of behaviour, are they doing it more than once, have they even learnt anything etc. Like in my situation if this happened again I don't think I would be really very forgiving if it happened again because um, at this point she's apologised and committed into um, finding balance within her own soul and, and self and spirit you know within herself she doesn't want to be negative anymore and has took steps to make that happen and I, I think if that was all then just abandoned and not, and not done then that would be a problem for me but I don't believe that that's going to be the case because she's already making steps like big steps changes of lifestyle step um, and I think forgiveness can be applied in these situations when both parties is willing to work through what happened and both try and be better people for it but I'm not completely innocent of, um, you know, at the start when we were sort of tiffing about spirituality and stuff, like I tiffed back, you know. Um, up until a certain point in that argument, I could have said we've both been a bit, and it was only when it crossed the line that it became something else. But up until that point, you know, I was a little bit... I mean, it's, my spirituality means a lot to me and I found the insults deeply wounding and, and whatever. But, you know, that's beside the point now because hopefully we can both say, you know, let's, let's work through it. And she's been a friend for a very long time. I think there, are these, there is a lot of banding about of for, forgiveness. You should forgive me. I'm not perfect. Mirror, mirror, mirror. And it's, there's no, like, long-standing foundation of friendship to base that on or there is no action of change to um, further that course. And committing to change is hard. I say this all the time, I'm like, people throw the words around like, I can change, and we can change, and we can sort this, and we can fix it. So it's so easy to say, but it, it, to actually change requires so much hard work like it's 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 effort and it's constant effort and it's constant um, sort of appraising of yourself to make sure you are pushing through any negative behaviors, habits, actions, um, frames of mind, whatever the case may be. And I know, ow, 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 because I just <laughs> just got, I just went like that and clicked my knuckle. <laughs> And I know because I go through it 
every day, you know, I don't, for example, I don't want to be a judgmental person and that is something I have to um, monitor and make sure that I'm, I'm not dismissive of people out of hand, you know, that's a flaw in me. Um, I have other flaws in that I have um, depression from what I have been through in my childhood and teen years and I feel that that is a daily battle and it's a daily battle that some days you just don't win and you just have to keep fighting and change in in order to fix something to you know broach a, a relationship and help it become sort of better and stronger um, is that same sort of persistence you know this absolutely zero point in just saying forgive me forgive me forgive me and then nothing changes you know and this, there is a lot of that like I know that I forgave an ex when I was young I mean I was only a teenager so 14 15 so I wasn't in fact, even maybe not even 15, maybe just 14. And he cheated on all the rest of it. And I just forgave him because he said sorry and I believed him. You know, being a teenager, not being experienced in, in these things. And of course he went out and did it all over again because I just forgave him and he didn't make any effort. And that's what happens, you know, when one person isn't really sincere in it. But I believe in, in my situation that we we are both very sincere in it because we love each other very much and I believe that uh, you know she's been my best friend my oldest friend since since I can remember and like you know years and years and years go by and even though we can't like physically see each other as much as we used to it doesn't it didn't change anything and like I said, she's been there for me when I needed her in really dire situations. And at the time, nobody else was there for me but her. Like, all my other friends abandoned me because the situation was too hard or whatever. And she didn't. She stood by me. And I can't have been easy to have lived with at that point. Because I'm sure I was pretty introverted and, and pretty falling to pieces, you know. I'll just look at my friend. <laughs> it did mean a lot to me actually that she went the further mile and like she actually said in her her letter about the thing she sent you know I, I don't want you to think that this is a bribe and I don't think you would think that and I don't feel it is that. It is something that I have felt that I needed to do to sort of it's like apologising for insulting your spirituality sort of thing. And then the heartfelt letter was the other stuff. So I will show those. And I debate about showing those. But they're so freaking beautiful that I'm going to have to. Because I have to share them. They're, they're incredible. Um, and just just that she actually like took some pages from a book about how, how she'd been feeling. And how the whole um, breakdown of the relationship had left her feeling stranded. And awful on the inside and she'd just been feeling sick with what she did and it moved me it moved me when I read it and I read the um, passages that she sent me from a book and it's a way in which we have often connected because we're both bookworms so it was a reconfirmation of our sort of spiritual connection as sisters that we both understood the gravity of what her sending me pages from a book meant, if that makes sense. Now I said to, on another video, um, give a person a second chance and never a third. And I do believe this. Um, people make mistakes and especially when they're out of character or you know there is circumstances surrounding it or whatever then forgiveness in those situations can be merited, but it's worth being wary of other people, like my ex-boyfriend, who would basically um, 
prey on people who had a forgiven heart. There are people out there that would do that. Um, he was a horrible human being, for lack of a better word, slug. <laughs> and, you know, Salem's, Salem's just <laughs> sticking with me. <laughs> That's what I would call my first black cat, Salem. I'm very original. I think forgiveness is a worthy endeavour when both parties fully, with full heart, feel that they, you know, they don't want to lose the other person in whatever capacity. And again, like I said, there hadn't been like physical deeds which make things ten times more difficult because you have to work through um, whether or not you can forgive the physical deed. And I'm lucky in this situation that, that that didn't happen, you know. It was frayed tempers and when it was hurtful it's something that can be moved past. So I think I think I've covered everything. Like I wanted to update people that this is going on. It's, like it's having a big impact in my life right now, obviously. And it was having an impact on me that I had lost my oldest friend. And obviously, no one can fill her spot. And because we have history, like history. <laughs> Yes, I do this so well when I when I'm feeling. Can you can you, can you tell that I'm emotional? I can't get my words out. Um, okay, so forgiveness is a worthy endeavor when it's true, when there's truth, when there's honesty there. Like reaching out with your heart to other people is something which is, let's face it, a risky thing to do because you can end up getting burnt by it. But I don't think that should be ever mean that we should stop. Um, at a certain point with certain individuals by all means stop because they're just taking advantage of a forgiving and loving heart and like my ex-boyfriend you know he they know your triggers they, they know how to manipulate you and those sorts of people aren't worth it but when I think it comes from the heart it is worth it. Many blessings.